everyone, and welcome to an introduction to the backend. So welcome to the backend half of the course. And before we begin, we're going to get a brief overview of what to expect for this entire second half of the course. But I also want you to congratulate yourself because you've already learned so much about the entire front end stack. And we're going to continue on learning about the back end stack and get that full stack web developer knowledge. But again, congratulate yourself. You've learned a ton already. Okay. So to use Django and Python effectively, a basic level of understanding the command line is necessary. And these commands are sometimes slightly different for Windows users versus Mac OS and Linux users. So refer to the notes for full examples and reference commands, since we're only going to need to know a few of them to get started. So the next lecture is going to have a quick overview and a basic introduction to command lines and using that command prompt or terminal if you're on Mac OS or Linux. And there's also full notes with written explanations in case you want to reference those. That's just going to be a quick overview lecture, and that's actually all that's in this particular section of the course. Then in the next section, in order to use Django, we need to have a pretty good understanding of Python. So we have Python level one and Python level two. And we need to learn Python up to the point of object-oriented programming. If you already have previous experience with Python, feel free to skip certain lectures, uh, look around in the curriculum, and see what's a good starting point for you. And I'll remind you to do that again when we actually reach those Python lectures. Once we've learned enough Python, we can begin to use the Django web framework to create websites. And let's go over a very high level overview of how Django actually works. And don't worry if you don't fully understand this. This is just kind of to plant a seed in your mind. That way, once you actually reach Django, you can remind yourself, oh, that's what we were talking about in the introduction lecture. Okay, so this is a very high level overview of Django. Basically, a user will request a URL on your website, something like www.hello.com. Then that's going to go to a urls.py file, which is then going to call the views.py file in Django. And the URLs are just connected to views through a simple call. And then that will call your models.py, which contains all the information of your database. And then that will query your database for the information, feed it back to views.py, which creates the view of your website, what it actually looks like. And then we use templates to fill out that view with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then we send that back to the user. So far, we now know the front end technologies, and that mainly falls right there under the templates. That's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What we're going to be doing next is learning enough Python so then we can use Django to actually understand this essential workflow. Okay, so now it's time to learn Python enough to successfully use the Django framework that we just described as a very high level overview. And as we go through the back end, make sure to visit the documentation for Django. It's actually really well written and we'll get into why it's so well written later on when we talk about Django. Okay, now a quick caveat and a quick note. Many Django tutorials dive straight into a clone project where you are guided through a clone of a popular website. Maybe they guide you through a clone of Twitter or Reddit, etc. This course is going to take a slightly different split approach where we create a very simple website first and then we move on to clones. So we first develop a very simple website and the website is just going to be a simple registry of user provided links with some basic user interactivity. The reason we don't do a clone at first is because this doesn't really provide the best learning experience for fundamental concepts. With the simpler website approach, we can give really clear explanations on the actual fundamental concepts and how Django works. Usually, if you just start off straight with a clone, you have a good idea of how to create that specific clone website, but you don't really have a good understanding of the fundamentals in order to create your own specific websites. And this approach also allows us to add in exercises that you can try out independently. So that way we can test your knowledge on the core concepts instead of just guiding you through a code along where you don't really get a chance to test your knowledge. Once we've gotten the main concepts down with the simple website, then we can tackle clone projects. The later sections of the course will then utilize those clone projects to introduce more advanced co concepts, things like social logins, authorization, security, deployment, etc. So we do have clones and they're a great way to introduce those topics in a fun and interesting way. All right, get ready to learn a lot. This half of the course is where you really get to build all the cool stuff and eventually you'll find yourself just staring at your computer thinking, whoa, did I just build a freaking website? And it's really exciting stuff. Okay, thanks everyone and I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to this quick lecture of a command line crash course. Being able to navigate your computer through the command line is a vital skill for any web developer or any general programmer. 
Some commands are slightly different depending on if you use a Windows computer or a Mac OS or Linux computer. In this lecture, we're going to briefly go over a few of the important commands you should know and point out any OS differences that you may find yourself facing. And you can always use the downloaded notes for reference. So there is a folder in the downloaded notes called Command Line Crash Course, and everything I'm going to be talking about is detailed and noted for you in those notes. And there's a separate text for Windows computers and a separate text for Mac OS and Linux users. Mac OS or Linux users share the same set of command lines. It's only Windows users that are a little different from those two. I'm on a Windows computer right now, so I'll walk through the Windows text file just to show you how it works, and I'll make sure to note any differences that occur if you're using a Mac. Let's get started. I'm going to open up my command prompt. All right, so here I am at my command prompt, and notice that for a Windows computer, your location is usually just told to you here on the left. So I can see here that I'm under a user folder. If I wanted to know all the folders that were under this current directory, I could use the dir command for a Windows computer, and that will, if I hit enter, show me everything that's under that current directory. So here you can see I have a lot of documents, and you also notice that if they start with a dot, that means they're basically hidden. So if you're looking at this in your Finder or your Windows Viewer, you won't find those. So that's the command for a Windows computer. On a Mac OS or a Linux computer, the command to view all your files in the current directory is ls, and that stands for list. So again, ls is for Mac OS and Linux users, and then dir is for Windows users. Now let's talk about changing directory. Imagine that I actually want to go to a specific file here. Let's say I want to go to this videos file. How do I do that? Well, this command is actually the same whether you're on any operating system like Mac or any operating system like Windows, etc. What you do is you type cd, which stands for change directory. And then you type in the next directory underneath the directory you currently are in that you want to go to. So for example, if I want to go to videos, I just type cd videos, hit enter, and you can see that I've changed directory into cd videos. If I want to go back up a directory, again, this is the same for both operating systems, you do cd dot dot, and that will take you back up one. If you don't quite remember what directory is you're looking for, you can just start typing the directory and then use tab to autocomplete. And you can keep hitting tab until you find the one you want. So in this case, I want CD video, so I can do that again. And we go back with CD. And that's how that works. Okay, now let's discuss clearing the screen. I have a lot of stuff here right now. This is a little different depending if you're on a Mac or a Windows. On a Windows computer, it's CLS to clear the command prompt. On a Mac OS or Linux, it's clear. So again, CLS for Windows to clear your screen, clear for a Mac OS or Linux. And you can always reference the notes here if that's easier for you. All right, so we learned how to list all the folders in a current directory. We learned how to clear the screen. If you ever want to display your current directory, you can just look here on the left if you're on Windows. On a Mac or Linux computer, sometimes it's not so obvious what directory you're currently in. So you can just type in PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. Again, that's for Mac OS and Linux users in case you want to print out or display your current directory. If I am on a Windows, I can either just look to the left or also just typing CD will also print out my current directory, but you can see it's exactly the same as what was already displayed for me. Okay, so now that we learned how to display our current directory, we are basically done with everything that we needed to cover for the command line crash course. There's also things such as make directory if you want to make a new folder. That's going to be something like make directory mkdir, and that's the same for any uh, operating system. And then you just say whatever the new directory you want, so something like new folder. But we're not going to be doing that too often throughout the course. And if we ever do touch upon some command lines that you haven't seen yet, I'll be sure to let you know what they are and how we use them. But for right now, the only ones you should really be aware of is how to change directory. The most useful one is, again, cd. Type in the directory name you're looking for. For example, videos. You can use tab to help autocomplete this. And if you ever want to go back, it's just cd dot dot. That's really the main one that I want you to know, changing directory. And that's the same regardless of your operating system. Okay, thanks.